The Mingda Goldfish Resin Printer? That's a bit of a paradox. Let's take a look and see if this fish can swim or end up belly up on the resin waters. Right here, right now on 3D Print Farm. Hello friends and welcome back to 3D Print Farm. I'm Garrett and today we're going to take a first look at the Mingda Goldfish. Yes, that's right, the Mingda Goldfish is a 2K mono resin printer trying to swim in a sea of other capable 6 inch monochrome machines. You know, first off, aesthetically, it reminds me a lot of the old colored IMAX. Lots of smooth, curved lines and a bright chartreuse dome that could be used as a warning device. With all this plastic, I'm really surprised that uh, it weighs around six kilograms. I'm guessing that the guts of this machine is where all the weight is. Uh, let's go take a look under the hood. Yes, after removing these four screws here, I'm greeted with this giant 80 millimeter computer fan here. And that looks like is what is cooling this massive heat sink and this is the parallel uh, LED matrix that I was talking about. The control board is a standard Qi2 board and it is connected, you can see this wire here, connected to a Qi2 Systems color LCD which is really nice. So starting from the back of the machine is this huge nine millimeter power button. Yes, this tiny round nine millimeter button must be depressed in order for the machine to turn on. Yes, using my index finger proved to be a bit uncomfortable as I had to jam the tip of my finger deep into the button for it to turn on. Like so. See how it is depressed? And now, you can see, through the glare. Now as you can see the machine is on. Please resin manufacturers when you add a power button to your machines make it to where a normal person can press the button in instead of having to use I mean look at this this is the side this is a pencil eraser just the pencil eraser barely fits in there now I could use the pencil to turn it off but using your finger is a bit of a chore, and yes, that is a little bit of an annoyance. I do like this little indented box. Of course, there's a plastic, looks like a cutout here that is not been cut out. It's almost like it's for an ethernet cable or something, but uh, this uh, little USB stick is at an angle. Uh, as you can see, that there's a couple of screws back here that you can remove and get to the system board really easily, which is, that's a really nice feature. So let's take a closer look at the machinery of the Mingda Goldfish. Starting out with the build plate. Uh, I, you know, I don't know this, I don't know about this. The build plate slides on this arm that's connected to the, to the Z rail. Uh, it uses a if you guys are familiar with Mars, Elegoo Mars printers, and you'll know it uses a captive spring within the build plate, so as the build plate lowers, then you get kind of a, a compression. You can see the build plate compress into the screen a bit, and that helps with the leveling process. They tried to use a single bolt here, uh, again, similar to the Elegoo Mars, rather than use multiple screws to have to, you know, once you get this tightened, so you have to manipulate the corners and try to tighten the bolts all down, and yeah. So the, they tried to use this one screw. Um, you really have to crank this dude down really tight to make sure that it doesn't move side to side. I don't like this uh, top piece here. This top piece is all plastic. You know, it slides onto this aluminum arm but as you crank this bolt down, the bolt is actually digging into this plastic. 
and I, I don't know if I like that or not. Uh, I can see potential issues with leveling in the future just because, I mean, you can see like a little mark uh, that's made in the bottom of this plastic. So I don't know how well this plastic holds up or if someone's getting in there and they're really cranking down on this, um, this knob to tighten everything down. If they're going to tighten it too much, it's going to crack the plastic. I'm not, I'm not real keen on that. Um, let's take a look at the, the vat. So the vat, yes, it looks to be a nice aluminum vat. Well, it's not, it's really hard plastic. The bolts are captive, which are, it's nice. That way you don't, you know, lose them or they roll off the table. Uh, what I don't like about it is when I initially got this, uh, where I can find it, there it is. There on the back of the FET, those of you that have replaced FET before, there's a, there's a frame that goes in here. This frame is plastic. Uh, some overzealous person at the factory cranked one of these screws down too hard and it ended up cracking this little plastic frame. Which leads to the question, how do you replace the FEP on these? I actually went out to the Mingda website and they sell replacement FEP, but the FEP is captive in this frame. And I believe two of them are like 16 bucks, not including shipping, so to me, that's a little high. I mean, it's convenient because when the FEP goes out, you just take these bolts out as usual and snap it in there, but I don't know. I mean, the, the plastic is really heavy duty. Uh, indentions here, so when you're pouring resin back in the bottle, uh, that's, a, that's a nice feature. Uh, the captive bolts are a nice feature, but plastic and not being able to replace the FEP in a normal fashion, where you're locked in a, to a you're locked into a proprietary style frame, I really don't like it. The top here, uh, you can see, is 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 a, a brushed aluminum. It's just a uh, it's just a thin plate though of brushed aluminum that goes around the six inch LCD screen. Remember when I said that the Minga Goldfish uses a uh, captive spring similar to the Elegoo Mars for, for leveling? Again, this allows the build plate to momentarily compress against the screen whilst leveling. So let me show you something. Take a look at this. Yes. That's plastic. You see the Z rail, it's attached to the Z rod with this little, looks like a plastic cap and then there's a captive bearing or something that's in this. The Z rail here is attached to a tower of plastic. Okay, keep that in mind, keep that in mind. So while you guys have a good angle of this, keep an eye on the Z-axis. So you're probably asking yourself, Mr. 3D Print Farmer, is there anything that you like about the Mingda Goldfish? Therein lies the paradox. Check out these models.
So you might ask yourself, if it prints great, are you willing to live with all of the issues and potential issues of this machine? Well, sitting at around $300, there are far too many tried and true resin printers out there that are priced far less with a longer track record, a huge user base, and manufacturer support to boot. <sighs> so, final thoughts on the Ming to Goldfish. Sadly, I would pass on this fish. Otherwise, it might be floating in the future. Once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please smash that subscribe button. I promise we have lots of cool stuff in store. New resin printers. We've got lasers coming up in future videos. So, as always, we'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now.